so hello learners today we will continue our chapter second of general psychology from ba ignu so today we will be covering nerve impulse like i said in the previous video you must be wondering that you were informed about cell neurons their types structures and functions but exactly how do the brain function how it receives information and how it sends information answer to your question is nerve impulse i thought i told you about nerve impulse in the last video right so this is what nerve impulse will be we'll cover it uh, in a little bit detail in this uh, paragraph a nerve impulse is an electrical event nothing an electrical event is nothing but an electrical signal or an electrical happening a nerve impulse is an electrical event is a kind of electrical signal or is a kind of happening that generates electricity electric current when a neuron is in stable or resting condition so when a neuron is stable or it is resting it is not doing some work the neuron inside has negative electrical charge and outside portion of neuron is positively charged so do not get confused this by this line this line is actually poorly phrased but what it means is this uh, that the inside of a neuron they have written the neuron inside it means that there is something and inside it is a neuron this is what the line means but actually they want to say that the inside part of a neuron itself so the inside of a neuron has negative electrical charge and outside portion of the neuron has positive charge whenever some stimulation takes st stimulation takes place and we talked about stimulation in the previous video whenever some stimulation takes place it disturbs this electrical balance so whenever some kind of stimulation happens some kind of st uh, stimulation generates inside our body uh, takes place it disturbs it it kind of disturbs this electrical balance like you throw a pebble into the water and disturbs the balance of the water it disturbs the water levels right so in the same way it disturbs this electrical balance so that the inside becomes positive and outside gets negative so they just interchange their positions the electrical charges interchange their positions positive was uh, an outside portion of the neuron positive. so the positive charge was outside the neuron it goes inside in a negative charge is inside the neuron it comes outside in this process electrical disbalance runs throughout the membrane uh, so sorry we have we have to read from this at this moment an impulse is generated aimed at restoring this balance so at this particular moment an impulse an impulse an impulse starts to generate uh, which is aimed at restoring this balance again because this disturbance has uh, changed the shifted the balance but now an impulse impulse is created by the brain by the body to restore this balance to again send electrical to again send negative charge inside the neuron positive charge outside the neuron in this process electrical disbalance runs throughout the membrane so to uh, change back this position and uh, to uh, restore this balance a, a kind of electrical disbalance runs throughout that membrane this impulse is then transmitted to another neuron and then this impulse is transmitted to another neuron via axon because all the neurons are connected with each other na so if one neuron is disturbed the other neuron will also disturb the second uh, the third one also disturb and so on all the neurons will be disturbed and their electrical charges shifted out in this way a chain of reactions occur till it reaches the concerned part of the brain where the meaning of this impulse is deciphered so here the meaning of this impulse is deciphered and brain sends directives for activity to the concerned parts of the body to understand it you should uh, understand it through the example of ear you see in our eardrum there's a kind of liquid so whenever some kind of vibrations takes place the vibrations go through that liquid in our ear and then uh, through the through various muscles to our brain and then brain deciphers the meaning of that vibration right then brain deciphers the meaning of that vibration in the same way a kind of electric pulse is generated from our body which travels through our neurons and in our neurons uh, uh, actually functions with that impulse and uh, that impulse is sent is sent to our brain and brain deciphers the meaning of that uh, that impulse through the help of the neurons so the neurons vibrate in such a way the neurons react with the electrical impulse in such a way so that the brain is able to decipher the meaning of the impulse right this is when neurons are helpful and how neurons and brain uh, work with each other in order to uh, decipher the electrical impulse and to decide what to do what action to take now moving on to the nervous system nervous system is a complex structure it controls all our activities and functions as a whole in an integrated manner given below is the flow chart of human nervous system so this is nervous system which is divided into peripheral and central nervous system 
Fairy feather is later on divided into somatic or autonomic nervous system. Somatic is divided into cranial and spinal nerves. So this is a whole complicated structure of the nervous system. The important parts are the spinal cord and the brain of the nervous system. The two important parts are the brain and the spinal cord. First we will read about spinal cord. It runs from services to the cervix to the end of waist. It is filled with fluid which is covered with meninges. So it is kind of covered with the, it is kind of filled with the fluid. Uh, let's say there are se several sections in our spinal cord. Each section is filled with the fluid and over it is uh, it is covered with a kind of a slab or a stone which is known as what? Which is known as meninges. Now this has 31 divisions, right? This has 30. There are 31 chambers like this. Or it has 31 such divisions. From which pairs of spinal nerves come out at regular intervals. From these sections, from these chambers, uh, little little pairs of spinal nerves come out at regular gaps at regular intervals it is a good conductor of nerve impulses now this these nerves spinal nerves are very good conductor of spinal uh, of nerve impulse they catch nerve impulse very easily and help in their interpretation all the sensory information from various parts of the body are received here and then sent to the higher parts of the body so all the sensory information like i am touching this this is kind of sensory information this passes this passes through the uh, this, uh, this creates an electric impulse, the electric impulse or the nerve impulse you can say is taken by my spinal nerves and the spinal nerves then send it through the spinal cord to the brain. All motor information from brain, brain and then all the kind of motor information like if I want to walk, if I want to move my fingers like this then the brain creates uh, an electrical impulse and then sends it, sends it through the spinal cord and then to the various uh, parts of the body that uh, start the action, right? Uh, like if I want to move my fingers in this manner then my brain creates an electrical impulse and it sends it to the spinal cord and spinal cord sends it to my fingers and then my fingers move in this manner right so this is a very long and complicated process but it happens so quickly uh, even faster than the speed of lightning that as soon as you think that you want to do like this you start doing like this right there is no gap between your thinking and moving your fingers like this that's why our brain is super 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 fast so besides this, the spinal cord also functions as center of reflex actions. I am sure you must have studied about reflex action in your 8th or 10th class book, science book. There was something on reflex actions like involuntary actions which happen all of a sudden, uh, which happens reflexively, which we don't want actually think about doing before it happens. Uh, for suppose you touch a very hot object, then your hand immediately retracts back, right? It immediately retracts back. You don't think that you want to retract your hand and then you start moving it back. It happens automatically reflexively so these are reflex sections and these are controlled by the spinal cord and that is why the spinal cord is also known as the automatic machine given its importance it is also called the automatic machine moving on to the brain brain is located in the bony skull you know where the brain is located it is located inside the skull within the skull the brain is protected by three layers of tissues called meninges again meninges come here it was meninges and meninges i don't know if it's uh, pronounced meninges or meninges uh, you can check it out later anyways uh, so meninges are uh, so layer of tissues are covered with meninges the outermost layer is called the dura mater so there is three layers of uh, three layers of tissues the outermost layer is called dura mater the innermost layer is called pia mater and between them is a very soft membrane that is called arcanoid now why is arcanoid uh, very soft because arcanoid is filled with csf that is cerebrospinal fluid it protects the brain from damages or shocks uh, suppose you are involved in, a, in an accident, right? In a crash, in an accident or some kind of mishappening that puts a lot of shock, a sudden pressure, a sudden shock, sudden vibration throughout your whole body. Now, in this case, the brain can be disassembled, right? The brain can be disassembled. The brain can even uh, fall apart. But this cerebrospinal fluid, uh, this cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, absorbs all of the shock, all of the damage and does not let it proceed towards the brain otherwise the brain can even have permanent injury injuries so our brain is composed of white and gray matter white matter is called so because it is covered with a sheath known as myelin sheath these are not important parts and you don't even need to remember much of it just remember that the brain is covered with three kinds of layers uh, dura matter, pia matter and arcanoid arcanoid is filled with csf that's the important part myelin sheath is not very important then in the forebrain, uh, the forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, these parts are actually important, but not actually not each one of them. I'll, if you want, I'll just uh, un 
I'll just tell you which one is important, which one is not as you, as you move on, right? So moving on, let me tell you. Forebrain. Forebrain consists of thalamus, hypothalamus, cerebrum. Midbrain consists of... Uh, sorry, they have not told what midbrain consists of. And his hindbrain has medulla, pons, cerebrum, cerebellum, sorry, and reticular formation. Reticular formation is very important. We will study it here. So let us start our journey of brain from the back. From the back. So from the evolutionary point of view, our brain developed from the back side. So that is the hindbrain. So because from evolutionary point of view, it is the earliest part to develop. The first and foremost structure of hindbrain is medulla. So the first part of the hindbrain is medulla. And medulla connects higher parts of the brain with spinal cord. It also includes a portion of reticular formation. Reticular formation is a web of uh, several nerves. Uh, kind, I will read it. Read about it later on. In I think in midbrain, yeah. So the uh, it also includes a portal portion of reticular formation and is called the vital center of the brain. So medulla is called medulla connects higher and also includes. So medulla is called the vital center of the brain. You need to remember this line. Medulla is called the vital center of the brain. And it connects higher parts of the brain with spinal cord. It is responsible. Now you need to remember its functions. It is responsible for autonomic activities of respiration, heart rate, blood pressure. So it is responsible for activities that happen automatically. That we don't consciously think about and make them happen. They happen automatically without our control over them. And, they, and we cannot stop them even if we want to. Right? You can forcefully obviously stop these activities. But that would only be after you die. So heart rate will not stop unless you die, respiration will not stop unless you die, blood pressure won't stop unless you die. So you can definitely forcefully stop them but then there is no meaning in stopping them because you will be dead. And after that destruction of this part of the brain can lead to instant death which is obvious of the organism because heart rate would lead to obvious instant death. Blood pressure, uh, the stoppage of your blood pressure will lead to instant death, your heart will just explode and you would die. So pons, pons is another part of the hindbrain. Now pons, another important part of hindbrain is located above the medulla. Uh, if you can remember their positions, it's better. But if you don't, it's not much necessary. You need to just remember its functions, what they contain and the functions that they perform. It contains different types of sensory and motor neurons. That is, it receives sensory information motor and motor information, right? So it uh, receives signals from the brain and it also receives signal from the sensory uh, sensory sensory parts. What was that? Sensory organ, sense organ, sense organ. Sorry. So it receives information from the brain and also receives information from the sense organ because it has both types of uh, neurons. So it receives sensory information from some parts of face and head. So obviously, sensory information is received from sense organs and sense organs are outside. Right, and motor information is always always received from the brain. Brain which is inside, sense organs are outside. Like the skin is a sense organ. Uh, my tongue, it would be sense organ. My eyes, it can, I don't know if it is, but I think it might be sense organ too. Uh, sense organs receive senses. So, organs that are related to your senses. Obviously, eyes is sense organ too. So, so you have uh, five sense organs, right? Yeah, that is your skin, your tongue, your eyes, ears, nose, right? So these are your sense organs. So they, so it receives information from these organs and then process it and sends it to the brain. It receives sensory information from some parts of face and head and sensations of touch, pain and temperature. It also regulates motor activities related to facial, ex facial expressions, muscular activities, eyeballs and jaw movements. So pons is basically related to your face, your face and head. So pons is related to your face. It receives a sensation of touch, pain and temperature and it also regulates motor activities uh, which are related to facial expression of muscular activities, eyeballs and jaw movements. Besides, it also connects as connection center between higher and lower parts of brain. So medulla and pons both connect, acts as connection between higher and lower parts of brain that is common in both of them. I think we'll only be able to cover the uh, brain in this video. Anyways, moving on to cerebellum right moving on to cerebellum cerebellum located at the back of hindbrain is a complex structure now it is pushed towards the back of the hindbrain too so it is at the uh, it is at the means it is at it is the furthest part of the brain right so it is a very complex structure they've already it's a complex structure its outer structure is again composed of gray matter now and inner structure is made up of white matter 
like white and gray matter we have already read about is this in here you can uh, read about white and gray matter online if you wish to it's not that important though in appearance it resembles cerebral cortex its main function is to coordinate motor activities uh, for cerebellum you only need to remember its position and its function so its main function is to coordinate what motor activities and destruction of cerebellum can lead to lack of coordination like a person's gait would be unstable or disorganized if its cerebellum is damaged so cerebellum and cerebrum are two different things remember it's cerebellum bellum bellum bella you can uh, ballet so you can connect bellum cerebellum with ballet and in ballet you need perfect composure perfect gait and perfect uh, organization of your feet and body and uh, your brain with it like a perfect synchronization of your feet and a uh, brain you need perfect balance so cerebellum is related with ballet ballet to balance so cerebellum is related with balance now midbrain midbrain encompasses brain above the pons and acts as a bridge between forebrain and hindbrain so midbrain comes after the pons part and it acts as a bridge between the forebrain and the hindbrain now it has two subdivisions which are tectum and tegmentum it has two subdivisions that are known as tectum and tegmentum now suppose this here is your brain now let's divide it into two this is the midbrain this much is the midbrain divided into two upper part and lower part upper part is also divided into two and lower part is again then divided into two so you can say midbrain is uh, basically divided into four sections so uh, it has two subdivisions called tectum and tegmentum now tectum has a pair of structures tectum has again two pairs of structures called superior colliculi and inferior colliculi and you can remember their functions very very easily there is nothing to worry about it like there are several divisions how do we remember their functions and their positions it is very easily to remember right so superior colliculi is on the roof because it is superior so it would it is above it is on the roof part and it is concerned with what it is concerned with visual in information why because our eyes are above right our eyes are above so above and superior colliculi is also above so superior colliculi and uh, visual information is connected with infer while inferior colliculi is on the floor and deals with auditory information that is the uh, speaking part then our mouth is below so mouth that is auditory information is connected with inferior colliculi then our eyes are above the auditory information our eyes are above the mouth that is visual information is concerned above the auditory information and visual information concerned with superior colliculi so visual confirm uh, visual information is related with eyes and eyes are above so above means uh, Uh, superior colliculi then auditory information is related in mouth mouth is below and below with what inferior colliculi right so we have read about this now tegmentum lies below tectum now tectum was above part now below it is tegmentum it has some important structures like rostral and end of reticular information we read about reticular information here somewhere here uh bones another medulla model here here portion of reticular information in here so now midbrain again contains part of reticular end of it contains the end of reticular information and nuclei controlling the activities of eye movements sensory impulses from lower parts to higher parts of brain and motor impulses from higher parts to lower parts of brain pass through it right so sensory information moves from lower to upper motor information always moves from upper to lower as we have uh, read previously many times right so sensory for information is taken from below from hand towards the brain and motor information is taken from the topmost part from the brain towards the hand so this much thing is obvious that sensory to information moves from below to above and motor information moves from above to below right so uh, from to lower parts of the brain starting from medulla in the hind brain and extending to mid brain and hypothalamus of fore brain is a net of fibers a net of fibers pass by and this is called reticular formation so reticular formation is a net of fibers that extend throughout the brain from the hind brain to the to the fore brain and is also called reticular activating system uh, so since this structure regulates and controls activities of sleep now this is the function of reticular formation it controls the activity of sleep arousal and attention and attention and it is called the recti reticular uh, sorry reticular reticular activating system it has two subsystems again it is divided into two subsystems ascending reticular system and descending reticular system ascending system sends sensory information sensory impulses to cerebral cortex 
while descending system receives motor impulses from brain and sends them to spinal cord these are very easy to remember as ascending system means from lower to above right from small to bigger small to bigger and very small small means below will take some small, small to be below and bigger to be above right so sensory information is always sent through uh, below to above so ascending reticular system is concerned with sensory information as ascending ascending means lower to above and sensory information is always sent from lower to above descending information is concerned with motor information as descending means from above to below and motor information is always concerned with above to sending it below right so this in this way you can remember it and now destruction of this system sends an animal into sleep and it may even send it into coma right because it is in it is concerned with arousal attention and sleep so it also acts as a filter for example when we are concentrating on some task we receive no other sensation except the ones on which we are focused in example when you are deeply focused on studying you forget about what's happening around you you don't receive information from the areas around you right uh, whereas when you are in deep pain or you are wounded your attention is solely focused on your wound so you forget about everything else that is happening around you it happens because ras that is reticular uh, activating system filter away all other sensation and do not allow them to reach the brain right so in the next part we will discuss uh, the forebrain right in the next video we will discuss forebrain because forebrain i think needs a separate video and this video is already quite lengthy and we will also put in peripheral nervous system into it okay so see you in the next video